Chapter Nine of the Science of Getting Rich by Valence D. Wattles. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Diana Meilinger. Chapter Nine: How to Use the Will. To set about getting rich in a scientific way, you do not try to apply your will power to anything outside of yourself. You have no right to do so anyway. It is wrong to apply your will to other men and women in order to get them do what you wish done. It is as flagrantly wrong to coerce people by mental power as it is to coerce them by physical power. If compelling people by physical force to do things for you reduces them to slavery, compelling them by mental means accomplishes exactly the same thing. The only difference is in methods. If taking things from people by physical force is robbery, then taking things by mental force is robbery also. There is no difference in principle. You have no right to use your will power upon another person, even for his own good, for you do not know what is for his good. The science of getting rich does not require you to apply power or force to any other person in any way whatsoever. There is not the slightest necessity for doing so. Indeed, any attempt to use your will upon others will only tend to defeat your purpose. You do not need to apply your will to things in order to compel them to come to you. That would simply be trying to coerce God, and would be foolish and useless, as well as irreverent. You do not have to compel God to give you good things, any more than you have to use your willpower to make the sun rise. You do not have to use your willpower to conquer an unfriendly deity, or to make stubborn and rebellious forces do your bidding. Substance is friendly to you, and is more anxious to give you what you want than you are to get it. To get rich, you need only to use your willpower upon yourself. When you know what to think or do, then you must use your will to compel yourself to think and do the right things. That is the legitimate use of the will in getting what you want, to use it in holding yourself to the right course. Use your will to keep yourself thinking and acting in a certain way. Do not try to project your will or your thoughts or your mind out into space to act on things or people. Keep your mind at home. It can accomplish more there than elsewhere. Use your mind to form a mental image of what you want, and to hold that vision with faith and purpose. And use your will to keep your mind working in the right way. The more steady and continuous your faith and purpose, the more rapidly you will get rich, because you will make only positive impressions upon substance, and you will not neutralize or offset them by negative impressions. The picture of your desires, held with faith and purpose, is taken up by the formless, and permits it to great distances throughout the universe for all I know. As this impression spreads, all things are set moving toward its realization. Every living thing, every inanimate thing, and the things yet uncreated, are stirred toward bringing into being that which you want. All force begins to be exerted in that direction. All things begin to move toward you. The minds of people, everywhere, are influenced toward doing the things necessary to the fulfilling of your desires, and they work for you unconsciously. But you can check all this by starting a negative impression in the form of substance. Doubt or unbelief is as certain to start a movement away from you, as faith and purpose are to start one toward you. It is by not understanding this, that most people who try to make use of mental science in getting rich make their failure. Every hour and moment you spend in giving heed to doubts and fears, every hour you spend in worry, every hour in which your soul is possessed by unbelief, sets a current away from you in the whole domain of intelligent substance. All the promises are unto them that believe, and unto them only. Notice how insistent Jesus was upon his point of belief, and now you know the reason why. Since belief is all-important, it behooves you to guard your thoughts, and as your beliefs will be shaped in a very great extent by the things you observe and think about, it is important that you should command your attention. And here the will comes into use, for it is by your will that you determine upon what things your attention shall be fixed. If you want to become rich, you must not make a study of poverty. Things are not brought into being by thinking about their opposites. Health is never to be attained by studying disease and thinking about disease. Righteousness is not to be promoted by studying sin and thinking about sin, and no one ever got rich by studying poverty and thinking about poverty. Medicine as a science of disease has increased disease. Religion as science of sin has promoted sin. 
and economics as a study of poverty will fill the world with wretchedness and want. Do not talk about poverty. Do not investigate it or concern yourself with it. Never mind what its causes are. You have nothing to do with them. What concerns you is the cure. Do not spend your time in charitable work or charity movements. All charity only tends to perpetuate the wretchedness it aims to eradicate. I do not say that you should be hard-hearted or unkind, and refuse to hear the cry of need. But you must not try to eradicate poverty in any of the conventional ways. Put poverty behind you, and put all that pertains to it behind you, and make good. Get rich, that is the best way you can help the poor. And you cannot hold the mental image which is to make you rich, if you fill your mind with pictures of poverty. Do not read books or papers which give you circumstantial accounts of the wretchedness of the tenement dwellers, of the horrors of child labor, and so on. Do not read anything which fills your mind with gloomy images of want and suffering. You cannot help the poor in the least by knowing about these things, and the widespread knowledge of them does not tend to all to do away with poverty. What tends to do away with poverty is not the getting of pictures of poverty into your mind, but getting pictures of wealth into the minds of the poor. You are not deserting the poor in their misery when you refuse to allow your mind to be filled with pictures of that misery. Poverty can be done away with, not by increasing the number of well-to-do people to think about poverty, but by increasing the number of poor people who purpose with faith to get rich. The poor do not need charity, they need inspiration. Charity only sends them a loaf of bread to keep them alive in their wretchedness, or gives them an entertainment to make them forget for an hour or two but inspiration will cause them to rise out of their misery. If you want to help the poor, demonstrate to them that they can become rich. Prove it by getting rich yourself. The only way in which poverty will ever be banished from this world is by getting a large and constantly increasing number of people to practice the teaching of this book. People must be taught to become rich by creation, not by competition. Every man who becomes rich by competition throws down behind him the ladder by which he rises, and keeps others down. But every man who gets rich by creation opens a way for thousands to follow him, and inspires them to do so. You are not showing hardness of heart or an unfeeling disposition when you refuse to pity poverty, see poverty, read about poverty, or think and talk about it, or to listen to those who do talk about it. Use your willpower to keep your mind off the subject of poverty, and to keep it fixed with faith and purpose on the vision of what you want. End of chapter 9 Chapter 10 of The Science of Getting Rich by Valence D. Wattles This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Diana Meilinger Chapter 10 Further Use of the Will you cannot retain a true and clear vision of wealth if you are constantly turning your attention to opposing pictures, whether they be external or imaginary. Do not tell of your past troubles of a financial nature, if you have had them, do not think of them at all. Do not tell of the poverty of your parents, or the hardships of your early life. To do any of these things is to mentally class yourself with the poor for the time being, and it will certainly check the movement of things in your direction. Let the dead bury their dead, as Jesus said. Put poverty and all things that pertain to poverty completely behind you. You have accepted a certain theory of the universe as being correct, and are resting all your hopes of happiness on its being correct, and what can you gain by giving heed to conflicting theories? Do not read religious books which tell you that the world is soon coming to an end, and do not read the writing of muckrackers and pessimistic philosophers who tell you that it is going to the devil. The world is not going to the devil, it is going to God. It is wonderful becoming. True, there may be a good many things in existing conditions which are disagreeable, but what is the use of studying them when they are certainly passing away, and when the study of them only tends to check their passing and keep them with us? Why give time and attention to things which are being removed by evolutionary growth, when you can hasten their removal only by promoting the evolutionary growth as far as your part of it goes? No matter how horrible and seeming may be the conditions in certain countries, sections, or places, you waste your time and destroy your own chances by considering them. You should interest yourself in the words becoming rich. Think of the riches the world is coming into, instead of the poverty it is growing out of. 
and bear in mind that the only way in which you can assist the world in growing rich is by growing rich yourself through the creative method not the competitive one give your attention wholly to the riches ignore poverty whenever you think or speak of those who are poor think and speak of them as those who are becoming rich as those who are to be congratulated rather than pitied then they and others will catch the inspiration and begin to search for the way out because i say that you are to give your whole time and mind and thought to riches it does not follow that you are to be sordid or mean to become really rich is the noblest aim you can have in life for it includes everything else on the competitive plane the struggle to get rich is a godless scramble for power over other men but when we come into the creative mind all this is changed all that is possible in the way of greatness and soul unfoldment of service and lofty endeavor comes by way of getting rich all is made possible by the use of things if you lack for physical health you will find that the attainment of it is conditional on your getting rich only those who are emancipated from financial worry and who have the means to live a carefree existence and follow hygienic practices can have and retain health moral and spiritual greatness is possible only to those who are above the competitive battle of existence and only those who are becoming rich on the plane of creative thought are free from the degrading influences of competition if your heart is set on domestic happiness remember that love flourishes best where there is refinement a high level of thought and freedom from corrupting influences and these are to be found only where riches are attained by the exercise of creative thought without strife or rivalry you can aim at nothing so great or noble i repeat as to become rich and you must fix your attention upon your mental picture of riches to the exclusion of all that may tend to dim or obscure the vision you must learn to see the underlying truth in all things you must see beneath all seemingly wrong conditions the great one life ever moving forward toward fuller expression and more complete happiness it is the truth that there is no such thing as poverty that there is only wealth some people remain in poverty because they are ignorant of the fact that there is wealth for them and these can be best taught by showing them the way of affluence in your own person and practice others are poor because while they feel that there is a way out they are too intellectually indolent to put forth the mental effort necessary to find that way and by travel it and for these the very best thing you can do is to arouse their desire by showing them the happiness that comes from being rightly rich others still are poor because while they have some notion of science they have become so swamped and lost in the maze of metaphysical and occult theories that they do not know which road to take they try a mixture of many systems and fail in all for these again the very best thing to do is to show the right way in your own person and practice an ounce of doing things is worth a pound of theorizing the very best thing you can do for the whole world is to make the most of yourself you can serve god and man in no more effective way than by getting rich that is if you get rich by the creative method and not by the competitive one another thing we assert that this book gives in detail the principles of the science of getting rich and if that is true you do not need to read any other book upon the subject this may sound narrow and egoistical but consider there is no more scientific method of computation in mathematics than by addition subtraction multiplication and division no other method is possible there can be but one shortest distance between two points there is only one way to think scientifically and that is to think in the way that leads to the most direct and simple route to the goal no man has yet formulated a briefer or less complex system than the one set forth herein it has been stripped of all non-essentials when you commence on this lay all others aside put them out of your mind altogether read this book every day keep it with you commit it to memory and do not think about other systems and theories if you do you will begin to have doubts and to be uncertain and wavering in your thought and then you will begin to make failures after you have made good and become rich you may study other systems as much as you please but until you are quite sure that you have gained what you want do not read anything on this line but this book unless it be the authors mentioned in the preface and read only the most optimistic comments on the world's news those in harmony with your picture also postpone your investigations into the occult 
do not dabble in theosophy spiritualism or kindred studies it is very likely that the dead still live and are near but if they are let them alone mind your own business wherever the spirits of the dead may be they have their own work to do and their own problems to solve and we have no right to interfere with them we cannot help them and it is very doubtful whether they can help us or whether we have any right to trespass upon their time if they can let the dead and the hereafter alone and solve your own problem get rich if you begin to mix with the occult you will start mental cross-currents which will surely bring your hopes to shipwreck now this and the preceding chapters have brought us to the following statement of the basic facts there is a thinking stuff from which all things are made and which in its original state permeates penetrates and fills the interspaces of the universe a thought in this substance produces the thing that is imaged by the thought man can form things in his thought and by impressing his thought upon formless substance can cause the thing he thinks about to be created in order to do this man must pass from the competitive to the creative mind he must form a clear mental picture of the things he wants and hold this picture in his thoughts with the fixed purpose to get what he wants and the unwavering faith that he does get what he wants closing his mind against all that may tend to shake his purpose dim his vision or quench his faith and in addition to all this we shall now see that he must live and act in a certain way end of chapter ten chapter eleven of the science of getting rich by Valence D. Wattles. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Diana Meilinger. Chapter 11. Acting in a Certain Way. Thought is the creative power, or the impelling force which causes the creative power to act. Thinking in a certain way will bring riches to you, but you must not rely upon thought alone, paying no attention to personal action. That is the rock upon which many otherwise scientific metaphysical thinkers meet shipwreck the failure to connect thought with personal action we have not yet reached the stage of development even supposing such a stage to be possible in which man can create directly from formless substance without nature's processes or the work of human hands man must not only think but his personal action must supplement his thought by thought you can cause the gold in the hearts of the mountains to be impelled toward you but it will not mine itself refine itself coin itself into double eagles and come rolling along the roads seeking its way into your pocket under the impelling power of the supreme spirit man's affairs will be so ordered that some one will be led to mine the gold for you other men's business transactions will be so directed that the gold will be brought toward you and you must so arrange your own business affairs that you may be able to receive it when it comes to you your thought makes all things animate and inanimate work to bring you what you want but your personal activity must be such that you can rightly receive what you want when it reaches you you are not to take it as charity nor to steal it you must give every man more in news value than he gives you in cash value the scientific use of thought consists in forming a clear and distinct mental image of what you want in holding fast to the purpose to get what you want and in realizing with grateful faith that you do get what you want do not try to project your thought in any mysterious or occult way with the idea of having it go out and do things for you that is wasted effort and will weaken your power to think with sanity the action of thought in getting rich is fully explained in the preceding chapters your faith and purpose positively impress your vision upon formless substance which has the same desire for more life that you have and this vision received from you sets all the creative forces at work in and through their regular channels of action but directed toward you it is not your part to guide or supervise the creative process all you have to do with that is to retain your vision stick to your purpose and maintain your faith and gratitude but you must act in a certain way so that you can appropriate what is yours when it comes to you so that you can meet the things you have in your picture and put them in their proper places as they arrive you can really see the truth of this when things reach you they will be in the hands of other men who will ask an equivalent for them and you can only get what is yours by giving the other man what is his 
your pocket-book is not going to be transformed into a fortunatus purse which shall be always full of money without effort on your part this is a crucial point in the science of getting rich right here when thought and personal action must be combined there are very many people who consciously or unconsciously set the creative forces in action by the strength and persistence of their desires but who remain poor because they do not provide for the reception of the thing they want when it comes by thought the thing you want is brought to you by action you receive it whatever your action is to be it is evident that you must act now you cannot act in the past and it is essential to the clearness of your mental vision that you dismiss the past from your mind you cannot act in the future for the future is not here yet and you cannot tell how you will want to act in any future contingency until that contingency has arrived because you are not in the right business or the right environment now do not think that you must postpone action until you get into the right business or environment and do not spend time in the present taking thought as to the best course in possible future emergencies have faith in your ability to meet any emergency when it arrives if you act in the present with your mind on the future your present action will be with a divided mind and will not be effective put your whole mind into present action do not give your creative impulse to original substance and then sit down and wait for results if you do you will never get them act now there is never any time but now and there never will be any time but now if you are ever to begin to make ready for the reception of what you want you must begin now and your action whatever it is must most likely be in your present business or employment and must be upon the persons and things in your present environment you cannot act where you are not you cannot act where you have been and you cannot act where you are going to be you can act only where you are do not bother as to whether yesterday's work was well done or ill done do today's work well do not try to do tomorrow's work now there will be plenty of time to do that when you get to it do not try by occult or mystical means to act on people or things that are out of your reach do not wait for a change of environment before you act get a change of environment by action you can so act upon the environment in which you are now as to cause yourself to be transferred to a better environment hold with faith and purpose the vision of yourself in the better environment but act upon your present environment with all your heart and with all your strength and with all your mind do not spend any time in day dreaming or castle building hold to the one vision of what you want and act now do not cast about seeking some new thing to do or some strange unusual or remarkable action to perform as a first step toward getting rich it is probable that your actions at least for some time to come will be those you have been performing for some time past but you are to begin now to perform these actions in a certain way which will surely make you rich if you are engaged in some business and feel that it is not the right one for you do not wait until you get into the right business before you begin to act do not feel discouraged or sit down and lament because you are misplaced no man was ever so misplaced but that he could not find the right place and no man ever became so involved in the wrong business but that he could get into the right business hold the vision of yourself in the right business with the purpose to get into it and the faith that you will get into it and are getting into it but act in your present business use your present business as the means of getting a better one and use your present environment as the means of getting into a better one your vision of the right business if held with faith and purpose will cause the supreme to move the right business toward you and your action if performed in the certain way will cause you to move toward the business if you are an employee or wage earner and feel that you must change places in order to get what you want do not project your thought into space and rely upon it to get you another job it will probably fail to do so hold the vision of yourself in the job you want while you act with faith and purpose on the job you have and you will certainly get the job you want your vision and faith will set the creative force in motion to bring it toward you and your action will cause the forces in your own environment to move you toward the place you want in closing this chapter we will add another statement to our syllabus there is a thinking stuff from which all things are made and which in its original state permeates penetrates and fills the interspaces of the universe a thought in this substance 
produces the thing that is imaged by the thought. Man can form things in his thought, and, by impressing his thought upon formless substance, can cause the thing he thinks about to be created. In order to do this, man must pass from the competitive to the creative mind. He must form a clear mental picture of the thing he wants, and hold this picture in his thoughts, with the fixed purpose to get what he wants, and the unwavering faith that he does get what he wants, closing his mind to all that may tend to shake his purpose, dim his vision, or quench his faith that he may receive what he wants when it comes man must act now upon the people and things in his present environment End of chapter eleven chapter twelve of the science of getting rich by balance d wattles this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by dana meilinger chapter twelve efficient action you must use your thought as directed in previous chapters and begin to do what you can do where you are, and you must do all that you can do where you are. You can advance only by being larger than your present place, and no man is larger than his present place who leaves undone any of the work pertaining to that place. The world is advanced only by those who more than fill their present places. If no man quite filled his present place, you can see that there must be a going backward in everything, those who do not quite fill their places are dead weight upon society, government, commerce, and industry. They must be carried along by others at a great expense. The progress of the world is retarded only by those who do not fill the places they are holding. They belong to a former age and a lower stage or plane of life, and their tendency is toward degeneration. No society could advance if every man was smaller than his place. Social evolution is guided by the law of physical and mental evolution. In the animal world, evolution is caused by excess of life. When an organism has more life than can be expressed in the functions of its own plane, it develops the organs of a higher plane, and a new species is originated. There never would have been new species had there not been organisms which more than filled their places. The law is exactly the same for you, your getting rich depends upon your applying this principle to your own affairs. Every day is either a successful day or a day of failure, and it is the successful days which get you what you want. If every day is a failure, you can never get rich, while if every day is a success, you cannot fail to get rich. If there is something that may be done today, and you do not do it, you have failed in so far as that thing is concerned and the consequences may be more disastrous than you can imagine. You cannot foresee the results of even the most trivial act. You do not know the workings of all the forces that have been set moving in your behalf. Much may be depending on your doing some simple act. It may be the very thing which is to open the door of opportunity to very great possibilities. You can never know all the combinations which supreme intelligence is making for you in the world of things, and of things, and of human affairs. Your neglect or failure to do some small things may cause a long delay in getting what you want. Do, every day, all that can be done that day. There is, however, a limitation or qualification of the above that you must take into account. You are not to overwork, nor to rush blindly into your business in the effort to do the greatest possible number of things in the shortest possible time. You are not to try to do tomorrow's work today, nor to do a week's work in a day. It is really not the number of things you do, but the efficiency of each separate action that counts. Every act is, in itself, either a success or a failure. Every act is, in itself, either effective or inefficient. Every inefficient act is a failure, and if you spend your life in doing inefficient acts, your whole life will be a failure. The more things you do, the worse is for you, if all your acts are inefficient ones. On the other hand, Every efficient act is a success in itself, and if every act of your life is an efficient one, your whole life must be a success. The cause of failure is doing too many things in an inefficient manner, and not doing enough things in an efficient manner. You will see that it is a self-evident proposition that if you do not do any inefficient acts, and if you do a sufficient number of efficient acts, you will become rich. If now it is possible for you to make each act an efficient one, you see again that the getting of riches is reduced to an exact science like mathematics. The matter turns then on the questions whether you can make each separate act a success in itself, 
and this you can certainly do. You can make each act a success, because all power is working with you, and all power cannot fail. Power is at your service, and to make each act efficient, you have only to put power into it. Every action is either strong or weak, and when everyone is strong, you are acting in the certain way which will make you rich. Every act can be made strong and efficient by holding your vision while you are doing it, and putting the whole power of your faith and purpose into it. It is at this point that people fail to separate mental power from personal action. They use the power of mind in one place and at one time, and they act in another place and at another time. So their acts are not successful in themselves. Too many of them are inefficient. But if all power goes into every act, no matter how commonplace, every act will be a success in itself. And as in the nature of things, every success opens the way to other successes. Your progress toward what you want, and the progress of what you want toward you, will become increasingly rapid. Remember that successful action is cumulative in its results. Since the desire for more life is inherent in all things, when a man begins to move toward larger life, more things attach themselves to him, and the influence of his desire is multiplied. Do every day all that you can do that day, and do each act in an efficient manner. In saying that you must hold your vision while you are doing each act, however trivial or commonplace, I do not mean to say that it is necessary at all times to see the vision distinctly to all its smallest details. It should be the work of your leisure hours to use your imagination on the details of your vision and to contemplate them until they are firmly fixed upon memory. If you wish speedy results, spend practically all your spare time in this practice. By continuous contemplation you will get the picture of what you want, even to the smallest details, so firmly fixed upon your mind, and so completely transferred to the mind of formless substance, that in your working hours you need only to mentally refer to the picture to stimulate your faith and purpose, and cause your best effort to be put forth. Contemplate your picture in your leisure hours, until your consciousness is so full of that, that you can grasp it instantly. You will become so enthused in its bright promises, that the mere thought of it will call forth the strongest energies of your whole being. Let us again repeat our syllabus, and by slightly changing the closing statements, bring it to the point we have now reached. There is a thinking stuff from which all things are made, and which, in its original state, permeates, penetrates, and fills the interspaces of the universe. A thought, in this substance, produces the thing that is imaged by the thought. Man can form things in his thought, and, by impressing his thought upon formless substance, can cause the thing he thinks about to be created. In order to do this, Man must pass from the competitive to the creative mind. He must form a clear mental picture of the things he wants, and do, with faith and purpose, all that can be done each day, doing each separate thing in an efficient manner. End of chapter 12